1900s Shusha, Azerbaijan. Three daughters, Suraya, Dilshad, and Gemar, were born in the family of Khairan Nisa Hanum and Talipan Bey Talipanov, who was the descendant of the Karabakhans. He served as the police officer at the time of Imperial Russia in ADR. The sisters also had a brother named Hussein. With the establishment of Soviet power, staying in Azerbaijan for the family was dangerous. Heroin's uncle, named Hussein Yanarmir Zajamalov, whom many simply called uncle, was a close friend of Mamad Amin Razul Sadeh and Yusuf Fezir Cemen Zemenli. He assisted the family in moving to Turkey. Hussein Bey, a teacher, poet, interpreter, and public figure, will be remembered as one of the first and prominent representatives of Azerbaijani migration. He had neither family nor children, therefore he directed all of his love and care on his sister Kherani Sakhanum's children. His efforts did not go in vain, as three of his nieces contributed to the science and culture of their time. All of the girls would become fluent in several foreign languages, Turkish, Russian and English, while Dilshad and Gemar would also freely speak German. The older sister Soraya became a prominent linguist, a folklorist who created scientific works and articles about the Azerbaijani language. Soraya Talib Khanbeyli graduated from the Faculty of Language and Literature from Istanbul University. She married Mustafa Gakili, a political immigrant who served as interior minister in the last cabinet of government. This information was included in the investigation materials of Madina Giyasbeyli Vakilova, a famous teacher and public figure. She was arrested in Baku in 1937 as a member of the Musavad party and sentenced to death. Medina and Mustafa Vakili were cousins. Years later, Soraya parted with her husband. After graduating from university, she decided to dig deeper into science, doing some research in the comparative study of the Azerbaijani language and Anatolian Turkic dialect. Support from her compatriot, a great future Turkologist, Ahmad Jafaroglu, who worked as an assistant professor at the university at that time, will also play an important role in her interest in Turkic studies. In the 1930s, she actively collaborated with the magazine Azerbaijan Yurt Bilgisi, where Ahmed Bey served as the publisher and editor. Later, she published a series of articles, Comparison of the Usage of Karabakh and Istanbul Dialects, in four journal issues. According to the words of relatives and friends, after her divorce from Mustafa Vakili, Ms. Soraya will marry an Italian Turk named Bekir Odoğlu, from whom she will have four children, Berin, Murad, Can, and Tarik. She served as a literature teacher in Istanbul Lyceums for many years, eventually passing away. The second sister, Dilshad Talib Khan El Brus, 1915 to 1979, became the first female scientist of Azerbaijan in nuclear physics. First, she graduated from the Istanbul Women's Lyceum, and then in 1934 from a university with major in physics and chemistry. She began her scientific career as an assistant at the Institute of Experimental Physics at university, becoming a professor at the Aegean University in Izmir in 1961. Professor Dilshad El Brus will be the first female researcher working in the field of atomic physics in Turkey. She is the author of two books and several scientific articles. Dilshad's belief in the ideals of the Republic were extraordinary. Especially during her student years, she took an active part in various social and literary cultural events held by the Azerbaijani political emigration under the leadership of Mamad Amin Razulzadeh. These events were also reflected in the immigrant press of the period. It so happens that Dilshad Hanum succeeded not only in the sciences, but also in art. Our heroine masterly performed national motifs on the piano. Other than that, she raised her nephew, the son of her sister, Soraya. When Dilshad passed away after battling a long illness, the physicist was buried in Turkey. At this time, Azerbaijan would still be unaware of this woman.
The third sister, Gamar, studied at one of the best schools in Baku. Sadly, we did not know much about her childhood. But at the time of the decay of ADR, Gamar was only 18 years old. Probably in Baku, she met the still not so well known Muhammad Agayev, who would soon be recognized as Mehmed Aha Ohlu. A little later, after their migration, the young couple got married. In 1922, they moved to Germany and then to Austria. They both studied in the leading schools of Europe. One year later, their only daughter, Gültekin, was born. In 1927, Yamar Hanum received a doctor's degree at the University of Istanbul in the field of art history of the East. She dedicated her life to art. And furthermore, when in 1929 her husband got an invitation to the Detroit Institute of Arts, she moved with him and their daughter across the ocean forever. In 1933, Mehmet Aha Oğlu, a research assistant and a professor of Eastern art, created the first Department of History of Islamic Art in the U.S. Based on the American standards, their apartment was simple, but the doors were always open to guests. Frequently, Azerbaijani and Turkish youth gathered at their house, listened to music, sometimes even live, and expressed thoughts about the good old times. But entirely diving into household chores and tirelessly welcoming guests was not the primary goal of our heroine. From 1937 to 1938, Yamar Hanum took a postgraduate course at the University of Michigan. Right after, she got invited to conduct scientific research in the Museum of Anthropology. However, World War II made its own adjustments to usual livelihoods. During the war years, she was engaged in language training of officers of the American army. For two years, she taught them Russian. After the war, she returned to the museum and throughout her career, up until 1974, she was the only female curator there. The museum's official site noted that Kamar Hanum single-handedly transformed the study of Asian ceramics. Furthermore, she taught at her alma mater, having reached a professor's degree. Gamar Hanum would become the leading ceramics expert of Southeastern Asia. The excavation results were always brought to her first. She was the author of more than 40 publications and several books, which can still be found on the internet. Gamar Hanum had traveled around world museums, making her contribution to studying works of material inheritance. But unfortunately, having achieved success in a scientific domain, the private life of the couple had suffered. And as a result, the family fell apart. The second spouse of Mehmed Aha Oğlu, Dorotha, later presented his collected materials to the Freer Gallery of Art Archive. However, in 1959, it was Gamar Hanum who augmented the collection by providing all manuscripts and incomplete works of her ex-husband. Their only daughter, Gültekin, whom everybody called Gili, also followed her parents' footsteps and dedicated her life to art. After her mother's death, she presented priceless materials and books belonging to Gamar Hanum to the Museum of Anthropological Archaeology. Unfortunately, Gültekin Hanum had recently passed away in August of 2018 in Ohio.